I picked up my New York Times yesterday, and there on the front page was a pretty favorable profile of Mike Pence. Then by coincidence, I looked at the Washington Post, and a front page piece there was a favorable profile of Karen Pence, his wife. Now, this got me thinking. The reason this seemed rather unusual, it shouldn't be in any typical administration. New faces come in, they come to Washington, and there are these sort of profile pieces. Who are they? Grew up in a log cabin, uh, went to a small college, never thought that they would uh, ascend to the pinnacles of power, you know, to kind of introduce them to the public. There's been virtually none of that in the Trump administration, in part because of the hostility that began even during the transition, in part because so many, uh, so much of the coverage has been about Donald Trump himself and aides like Steve Bannon, who are considered controversial. Now, Mike Pence, by all accounts, doing a fine job as vice president. The guy, you think about this, the guy hasn't really made any mistakes or very, very few mistakes since Donald Trump chose him last year. Uh, and he has all the government experience that the president doesn't have. Former congressman, former Indiana governor, you know, knows his way around Capitol Hill and all of that. So it would seem like uh, he would be a prime choice uh, for this kind of piece. And also, um, he is, he's kind of self-effacing and low-key uh, and speaks uh, in carefully chosen words, you know, all of which is, is generally considered good in a politician, but not necessarily great copy. But here's the thing. When I read the piece, I realized that part of the framing was that Pence is kind of normal and contrasting that with Trump. So, for example, an unnamed Republican uh, said that um, Pence... Um, was viewed, initially at least, as an alternative reality president who would prod Mr. Trump's presidency toward normalcy, toward normalcy. Uh, but now the view is, according to this piece, uh, that Democrats and even Republican never-Trumpers um, view him as a president in waiting. In other words, some kind of scandal is going to bring down the president and Mike Pence will become president. Uh, and then you read further, and there's a recitation of uh, how in the view of the reporters, uh, Trump is doing things that Reince Priebus, the chief of staff who draws a lot of criticism, might ordinarily be doing, but uh, Pence is filling the vacuum. Um, now, my sources say that uh, Pence finds some of this kind of offensive, both the notion that he has to be a translator for Donald Trump uh, and also the idea that he's not working closely with as opposed to supplanting Reince Priebus. And here's a paragraph that really jumped out at me. At times, Mr. Pence can seem jarringly out of place, a clean-cut 1950s Republican cheerfully navigating the chaotic Mad Max landscape created by the disruptive duo of Mr. Trump and Mr. Bannon. Okay, so he's normal. Everyone else is kind of weird. Uh, but nevertheless, it's good press. And then the Washington Post piece uh, was also about um, Karen Pence's faith and also uh, how she is a key advisor to uh, her husband. The Times, uh, in fact, said that she was wary of uh, then-Governor Pence accepting Donald Trump's bid to be on the ticket. Now, you know, any press is good press for an administration, and the thing that we have to keep in mind is if um, Pence is viewed favorably by the media, or at least is getting some of these kinds of stories, on some level, doesn't that reflect well on the man who chose him? Remember, it was kind of down to Newt Gingrich, Chris Christie, and Mike Pence. And finally, to some extent, a lot of these sort of favorable profile, soft focus pieces usually get focused on the first lady. But in this case, Melania Trump remaining at Trump Tower with the, the couple's 10 year old son, Barron, which I happen to think is perfectly fine and absolutely her choice. But this has frustrated the press. And so the day before the Washington Post, it was one of these where's Melania pieces that described her as reclusive and elusive. Uh, in other words, she's not doing many of the traditional first lady things, although yesterday she gave a speech at the State Department presenting some women's awards, and so she's not entirely elusive. So if uh, all the people who wrote about Laura Bush and Michelle Obama and their pet projects and their fashion choices, uh, if they're going to focus instead on the Pence's, that's fine, but it does sort of stand out in an administration that gets very few of these kinds of favorable profile pieces.